Hello and welcome to this tutorial on using timers in your C-sharp.net uh, Windows Forms application. So what I'm going to go ahead and do is create a new project. I'm going to select a Windows Forms application and I'm going to name it uh, Timers Test C-sharp. And I'm going to click OK. And what this has done is created the, the usual very skeleton-like uh, project with one form in it. We're not going to do too much setup today, we're just going to be looking at timers. So if you just drag down into your toolbox and find the timer control. We're going to drag this guy onto our form and you're going to notice straight away that um, unlike other objects, timer one does not have a visual uh, element to it. So nothing's going to appear on the form, it's going to appear down here. Um, these objects act in much the same way as the other objects you'll be used to using by now. They've got names and properties you can set using the properties window and additionally as well you can double click them to create code. You'll see as I've double clicked that, that's created our timer one under bar tick method for us. Uh, this is where this code will fire every single time the timer ticks and the timer ticks based on this interval value and whether it's enabled. Um, this one isn't going to tick because it's disabled but if it was enabled it would fire every 100 milliseconds. We're going to up that to 1000 and that's going to give us every one second. I'm going to change the timer value to true, so that means it will start instantly when our form does. And then finally, in this piece of code it's written for us, I'm going to do, we're going to check to see what color the background is. So we're going to say if this dot back color equals equals color dot red, and if it does, we're going to say. Uh, this dot back color equals color dot brown or olive. Let's go with olive or navy. No, navy. I can't make up my mind. All right. And once we're finished with that, we're going to close off the end of the if with the, the curly brackets, as you see here. So we're saying if this dot back color, and we're using two equals because we're we're doing some logic on a statement. Um, the compiler needs to know that, that that's what we're doing, and that's why we use two equal signs. Um, once the compiler comes to this, it will check if the back color is equal to red. It will fire the code within the curly brackets. Um, additionally, we're going to say else, meaning if the color is not equal to red, then we're going to set this dot back color, and we're going to make it red this time. Color dot red. Um, we'll pop that in there. Now, if we go ahead. Just double check that our timer is enabled. Yep, if we go ahead and run this, we now have a form that flashes between red and navy. Um, there is a few other things I'll show you briefly in code, and that's going to be how to stop the timer, which can be very useful if it's finished doing what it's doing. Um, we'll just pop down at the bottom here, I'll show you that. Uh, and this timer is called timer one. Remember, if you rename your timer, it'll be called something else. So we'll say timer one dot. Uh, enabled equals false and what that will do will stop the timer so if we run the project again you'll see that the form turns red and then the timer stops it so it never runs again um, finally let's look at say maybe slowing the timer down so we'll just comment out that line oops let's stop debugging first we'll just comment out that line there that disables the timer, and we'll say timer one dot interval equals timer one dot interval uh, plus 100. And what that's going to do is add 100 milliseconds to the interval every time the timer runs. Um, what that what we'll notice when we run our project is that it gets slower and slower and slower to change color. You see that? It's getting a tenth slower every single time. Well, from its initial starting point, that is. Um, yeah, that's pretty much timers. You can be as creative as you want with the code inside the timer. It doesn't have to change the background color. It can do pretty much anything. You know, uh, it could be useful if you're making a game for animating objects around the screen by setting their x and y values. Um, you could put, you could change the logic to see, you know, if the x value is is not more than the edge of the screen, then keep moving towards the edge of the screen otherwise change direction, something like that. Um, 
the sky really is the limit, but that's the basics on how to use the timer um, by dragging it onto your project, double clicking it and filling out the code. So I'm going to leave you with that today. Uh, if you'd like any more of the same, please subscribe and if you have any comments or feedback, let me know at the bottom of the screen. Thank you very much.